let's face it, there are more scam artists amongst us than ever before. And they're getting more sophisticated. As a CFP, I know this, and I almost fell for a scam recently. So when I received a telephone call from my bank, the caller ID said B of A, and it showed up just like it would if I was getting a call from B of A, I answered it. And the man identified himself and explained that he was checking to see if a Zelle transaction I did the day before was initiated by me and that it was legitimate. I explained that I didn't initiate any Zelle transactions and so I was concerned. Well, if you want to know what happened, stay tuned. We're going to dive into banking fraud real-time update. Hi, my name is Annette Bao, your host of the Wealth Inside and Out podcast. I'm a certified financial planner and founder of The Millionaire Insider. For over 30 years, I have been advising and researching the top 1% of millionaires, and I am passionately obsessed with money, mindset, and the intersection of self-worth and net worth, and how the two connect and allow us to live fulfilled and wealthy lives on our terms. I'm a Midwestern girl who had a dream, began investing $25 a month 35 years ago, and today have a multi-million dollar net worth. I teach the tried and true that only someone with over three decades of experience advising millionaires would know. This podcast is different about much more than money. We talk about mindset, success, money blocks, worth barometer, and all aspects of money and topics from practical manifestation, along with real world how-to and everything in between with the goal of making your journey easier and more fun. Think of this as coffee, actually matcha tea, learning real world common sense money and life advice from a BFF that you can start applying today. If you want to create a financially free life you love, you are in the right place, my friend. This is the Wealth Inside and Out podcast. So today's free resource is our Worth Barometer Guide. You can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash WBG. You're going to love this resource. The Worth Barometer is a combination of your belief and self-esteem, and it's the first step to create the confidence you need to create a fulfilled and wealthy life on your terms. Again, you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash WBG. For 40 years, I have studied extraordinarily successful people, and for over 30 years, I have been advising them. One of the things that I have been fascinated with is how do you secure a financial future and retirement and life you love? And it all begins with your worth barometer. Again, you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash WBG. For today's show notes, you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash 31. So let's dive in. So what is banking fraud? Banking fraud is the intent to obtain money, assets, or sensitive personal information through deceitful means. Common types include banking and credit card fraud, as well as identity theft, phishing scams, check fraud, money laundering, wire transfer fraud, ACH fraud, and types of loan fraud. The odds of any of us falling prey to banking fraud is higher than it's ever been. So we've got to be aware of it. I recently received a call on my cell phone and the caller ID was from my bank. And so I picked it up and I just thought it was weird. They were calling my cell phone. I thought that was so odd. And they knew my cell phone number and they knew where I banked. The caller did identify himself, but not right from the get-go. He said he wouldn't ask for any personal or banking information. And this is, I thought, really interesting because, as you know, they always say, do not share any personal or banking information. So right away, he said, I won't ask for that and don't share that. He shared that someone had called my bank and authorized two Zelle transactions, and he was simply researching to determine if they were legitimate. Now, this is an alert. I was not aware of this, but the bank confirmed that Zelle transactions can only be initiated by you on the computer or on your app, not over the telephone. I didn't know that. The scammer said he would walk me through canceling it. Now, this is another alert. Once you initiate a Zelle transaction, you can't cancel it. So the scammer told me to open up my account And I said, well, which one? I have 14. He said he would not ask for any 
information and not to give him any information, but that he would help me figure it out. And again, I thought that was kind of odd because I'm thinking, all right, if he knows which account I sent the Zelle out of, you would think he would know which account I was referring to. And he could have even said one of the names. He gave me a case number and an email address. Now, this was the real alert. The email he gave me was not from the bank. It was from Outlook. And that was when I knew it was a scam. What I said, and I probably should have gone a little bit longer through it just to see what he did. I've always kind of thought it was funny getting these calls from scammers. And I can remember I was on vacation in Kauai and I got one and I'm like, oh no, I'm subject to fraud. Oh, the IRS is going to take all my assets. Oh no. And I don't know what it is, but they always hang up on me. And then I call back later and the number's disconnected. I'm like, I don't know. So I've always thought, well, I wasn't, I'm not really a good pretender to be scammed, but I'm always so interested in what they say and do so I can warn my clients what they're doing. But anyway, what I said is I said, I'm sure you know we have a personal banker. I mean, all you have to do is look at our assets and you'd know we have one. I didn't say that, but that's what I'm thinking in the back of my mind. And because I'm sure that the safety of my accounts is your number one concern, let's get my personal banker on so she can confirm what you're saying. He said, okay. He said he's going to put me on hold. That was kind of a suspect. Like he didn't say he'd conference me and I didn't give him that option. But what was weird is he put me on hold and this was another alert. There was no music. Now the scammer held on for 10 minutes and then it disconnected. I think what happened, he's probably put me on hold and then ultimately just disconnected. But it was likely he would have never come back on the line. And so I got a hold of the bank and they confirmed it was fraudulent. Now, one of the things that was really disappointing, I banked with Bank of America for a long time, just my, mostly my, my checking account. And then we have a savings with them. But the thing about Bank of America that is so frustrating is I said, why aren't you letting people know about this? Oh, you know, we set out alerts here. You can go here and read about all the scams. I'm like, This is one that could be really deemed as legitimate. And they just don't really seem concerned about it. I can remember years ago, I got a check stolen and I found out about it literally the next day. And I'm trying to get them to do something. They did nothing. And the thieves ended up getting $27,000. Now, I didn't have to pay any of it, but I was like, why aren't you more concerned about this? They could have done something immediately. In fact, they had video footage. The people literally went from Arizona all the way down through Yuma over to California until they finally got stopped. But they had they had fake checks made and then they were using this poor girl's ID and they had her name on our checks. It turned out that the payroll company I use, it seemed that there was some affiliation through that. But make a long story short, they could have stopped it so much sooner, but they didn't. And they're like, we get so much fraud, we just don't have the manpower. And I thought, what a weak excuse. But anyway, just to be aware of. So some tips. Pay attention to details. The person didn't provide me his name initially. And that is not proper banking protocol. So that's something to be aware of. He did give it to me later, but not initially. Zelle transactions can't be initiated via phone and they can't be canceled. The scammer gave me an Outlook email, not my bank URL. That was huge. You can't be too careful. Call your bank's fraud department and confirm if it's legitimate or not. And also note, the IRS is not going to call you and neither will your bank's fraud department. They're going to either text you or they're going to email you or they're going to put an alert on your account. So be aware. Now, if you are suspect or you become a victim of banking fraud, these are some of the things you can do. First of all, notify your bank or financial institution immediately. They can stop the transaction. They can freeze the account. They can do a lot of things to make sure you don't have money stolen. And if you do, to help you recover the stolen funds. So I'm going to give you some different agencies that you can file a complaint with in the show notes. So you can go to themillionaireinsider.com forward slash 31 and scroll down to the bottom and see the links. We had listed the links in this episode. However, they had already changed. One of them had already changed. So we'll do the best we can do to keep the links up to date. However, if you go to one and you find that it's no longer valid, just do a 
internet search and put in the organization like FDIC and then complaint, and they should direct you to where you can file a complaint. Now, if you believe that fraud involves a bank that's insured, you can contact the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, and you can file a complaint. You want to file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, at their website, which is ftc.gov. They collect information about fraud and share it with law enforcement agencies to aid in investigations so they can be helpful. You want to report the fraud to your local police and even file a police report. This can help to initiate an investigation into the matter and many banks will require it. So just be aware of that. You can also file a complaint with the Internet Crime Complaint Center, IC3. It's a partnership with the FBI and the National White Collar Crime Centers if the bank fraud involved online activity, such as phishing, emails, or cyber attacks. And their website is https colon forward slash forward slash www.ic3.gov. Consider placing a fraud alert or credit freeze on your credit reports with the major credit bureaus. That's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. If you notify one of them, it automatically notifies all of them that you have a fraud alert. This will help to prevent fraudsters from opening up new accounts in your name, especially if they access your sensitive data, like your social security or your date of birth or a combination thereof. If you suspect that your social security number was compromised as part of the fraud, contact the Social Security Administration to report the issue and discuss potential steps to protect your benefits. If you suspect that the fraud involved mail fraud or other fraudulent activities, contact the U.S. Postal Service. Mail fraud serious. So the good news, if they get busted on that one, probably all of them are felonies, but you just don't want to be getting involved in mail fraud. I do know that. So remember that it's crucial that you act quickly. And the sooner you report it, the better chance you have of minimizing financial losses and getting the help you need. And additionally, you want to keep detailed records of all communication with all the authorities and all the people you spoke to, because that can help to resolve the issue. So those were some helpful tips on what to do if you suspect fraud. But now let's look at some tips to protect against banking fraud. First, use strong, unique passwords. Don't use your date of birth or common words. Consider using a phrase or an auto-generated really strong password. Always make sure that the password shows up as a strong one. Consider using a password storage option. This can help to make it a little more difficult to get in, and it can also keep you from having to put passwords on your computer. We walked through one place, and I don't remember where it was, and there were all these people who had all their passwords listed because they were so complicated they couldn't remember them. It's hard, but you've got to make sure that you don't do that because you don't want somebody walking by and getting access to sensitive data. Enable two-factor authentication, 2FA, whenever possible. This is where they'll send you a one-time code to verify it's you. And it's really important that you do that on all different accounts, not just financial, but even social media or anything that has sensitive data. And then monitor your accounts regularly. You've got to pay attention to your bank, your credit card statements, and look for unauthorized or suspicious transactions. One of the things that I noticed when I started taking over my accounting is that my bookkeeper didn't notice when things were fraudulent or unauthorized because she just wasn't aware of all the transactions. So it's really important that you are paying attention. And then also set up account alerts. Many of the banks and credit cards will give you alerts if There is activity that looks suspect. I get notification from my different credit cards if there is a transaction that they want me to verify I made. Use secure Wi-Fi networks. Do not use public ones. And ideally, use a private Wi-Fi network or a virtual private network. Even when I'm traveling, I do not tap into the free ones. Avoid conducting any sensitive online bank activities over public Wi-Fi is really anything, but especially financial matters. 
be cautious with emails and links. Don't click on a link or attachment to an unsolicited email or a text message. This is often what's known as a phishing attempt. Secure your devices. Keep your computers, smartphones, and tablets up to date with the latest operating system and security updates. You want to install a reputable antivirus and anti-malware software to protect against viruses and malware. Now, we have an entire IT department that handles ours and they monitor our computers regularly. I realize you may not be able to afford that or that may not be warranted in your situation because you're not dealing with a bunch of people's sensitive financial information. And I just encourage you to go do the research, talk to different people and figure out which one will work best for you. Don't share sensitive information like your social security number, pins, or account details through email, text, or phone calls. Verify the legitimacy of any request before giving any information. And even if you're working with an advisor, I have clients who send me sensitive information over the email. I'm like, no, no, no. Upload that to our secure portal. Protect your personal documents. You want to safeguard important documents like bank statements, checks, credit card statements, as well as all of the account numbers. Beware of cold calls and impersonators. Be cautious when you receive unsolicited calls claiming to be bank representatives, even if they're calling from a number for the bank. I just cannot believe that they are so sophisticated that they could get a phone to call me and it appears it's coming from the bank's phone. I just think that's unbelievable. Banks typically do not request sensitive information over the phone. If in doubt, hang up and call your bank's official customer service number. So important. Secure your mail. You want to collect your mail promptly to prevent theft of bank statements, credit card offers, or anything like that. And consider using a locked mailbox for added security. We use a P.O. box. And then be wary of ATMs. You want to inspect ATMs for suspicious devices like card skimmers. Always cover your pen when entering it. And I just want to share a story. I used to get gas occasionally at this station. And literally every time I got gas, my credit card got compromised. So I think somebody must have put one of those sheets in there where they put the credit card in and then they scan the number and then they use it. That's why you don't ever want somebody to take your credit card. You want them to be right there where you see it. And I know a lot of restaurants do that, but it's just not a great practice. Regularly check your credit reports. You can obtain free copies of your credit reports with the major credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion at least once a year. And then review it and make sure you agree with everything on there. Educate yourself. Stay informed about common types of banking fraud such as phishing, identity theft, and account takeover. Awareness is the key. And then secure your mobile banking. Use a strong PAN or a biometric authentication, like a fingerprint or facial recognition, to lock your mobile banking app. Only download official banking apps from trusted sources. Be careful. The real key is to just use some common sense. Be vigilant and pay attention. Your risk of falling prey to victim as far as banking fraud or other types of fraud is less likely if you're paying attention. And the proactive prevention is the best defense against fraudsters. So start there. And then as you go, you're going to get better. But just be paying attention. They're out there, my friends. And we've got to, we've got to protect ourselves and protect our assets. It's just crazy. I always think like, why can't these people be doing something positive? The amount of time and energy they spend on doing fraudulent things, just think what good they could do in the world and they could be making a ton of money and not be ending up in H-E-L-L-L because I'm telling you, my friends, there is a thing called karma and I have seen it over and over in my life. You don't get away from doing things like this that are not good. So don't become a victim of it. So there you have it. So we've gone over a few different things. So let's just take a review. We've reviewed what is banking fraud, common types. We've gotten some tips as far as how to avoid it, what to do if you are subject to it, and then some additional tips to protect against it. 
I want to thank you so much for joining me for Banking Fraud Real-Time Update. I'm Annette Bao, host of the Wealth Inside and Out podcast. All international copyrights are reserved. Bye for now. Bye for now.